Venice Biennale 2011, Can Art Influence Politics? In the interview, Bicha Kuriga, curator of the 2011 Venice Biennale. Bicha Kuriga, this year's Biennale, the 54th, has the title Illuminations. That includes the dual ideas of light and nations. How do they fit together? Light is an old preoccupation of art, but as a theme for the Biennale, it would be a bit boring. But connecting it to the idea of nations gives it a more real-world edge. But light also refers to the special magical light that Venice is famous for, and to the painter Tintoretto, who I've included in the exhibition. I'd like to talk about him in a minute, but first, there are nearly 90 national pavilions this year, more than ever before. And there are some interesting first-time countries, Zimbabwe and Saudi Arabia, for example. That's put an end to talk of the Biennale being outdated in a globalized world. Countries seem more interested than ever in taking part. I'm glad you share my view on that. I did get needled by people who keep saying it's obsolete, it's anachronistic. I think the pavilions are a piece of 20th century history that should be maintained. At the same time, it's exciting for me as a curator to know that when I curate an exhibition, I have 89 other curators on my doorstep who are at the top of their profession and can present art that I never could present. When I feature a Chinese artist, that's not the same as when China designs its own pavilion for Venice. Well, that brings us on to Ai Weiwei, the Chinese artist who was arrested and hasn't been seen since. That's a political issue, and you recently said art can only be interesting when it teaches me something about the world. Does that mean art must be political to be relevant? I wouldn't see it as narrowly as that. But it is the case that there's a way of looking at the world that's different from what we see in the political world. Current affairs are reflected here, of course, but so is art history. As you mentioned a moment ago, you've included three works by the great Renaissance painter Tintoretto in the exhibition. And, as far as I know, you're the first curator of the Biennale to do so. That's pretty sensational. Why place Tintoretto among all that contemporary art? I believe the three pictures by Tintoretto have the power to speak to a modern audience with their compelling visual idiom. You don't have to be an expert in art history to draw a comparison between Tintoretto's Last Supper and that of Leonardo da Vinci, or to realize that the world changed between the painting of the two works. Tintoretto's use of shadow and bright halos is dramatic. It's a different idea of man than during the High Renaissance. Does he still inspire artists today? Can you see or feel that? If we look at the conceptualism that's so popular in contemporary art, so popular that it's become a kind of universal language in our globalized world, I believe that was already an idiom in Tintoretto's time. Venice is a conservative city. How did you manage to persuade the people at the Academia and one of the major churches to loan you the paintings and ship them across the lagoon, so to speak? 
Ja, gut, man muss halt frühzeitig anfangen. Ich, das war well, you have to start planning it in good time. Haben wir alle diese Besuche gemacht in all diesen, we visited the institutions uh, in question and we were always given a good reception. War ich, uh, immer gut, uh, also There was nothing but approval for our plan. They thought it was a good idea to finally be involved in the Biennale. Endlich auch zu Biennale was beitragen zu können. Man hat gemerkt, dass Sometimes those institutions have been left out in the cold by this contemporary art event that descends on the city every two years like an alien spaceship and has nothing to do with Venetian history. So they welcomed you with open arms? Yes, I did feel that was true at times. The major arts events, like the Biennale or the Documenta, always make a big secret out of which artists will be featured. They can choose the artists they want. What was most important to you? Big names, new discoveries, young artists, artists from parts of the world that don't normally feature? Someone told me we have a record number of young artists this year. More than a third are younger than 35. We didn't make a conscious decision to seek them out, but we did want the Biennale to be a platform for the younger generation to have their voices heard. That's really what the Biennale is there for, I think. But of course, we also have more mature artists. We don't want to turn into a youth festival. This year, as usual, in the opening week of the Biennale, Venice will become a catwalk for billionaires, major art collectors with their yachts and parties. Are you bothered by this use of art as a lifestyle accessory? There may be times when it's bothersome. You can look at it as a kind of carnival. But it's all part of the Biennale. That brings us to the art market. Market forces decide a lot in the art world. Apart from the pure enjoyment of art and the intellectual debate here, is the Biennale also a sales event that puts a price tag on artists? Yes, but if you look back at past catalogues, and we have been doing just that, you soon see that it's a great myth that appearing at the Biennale automatically turns someone into a star artist. It's not the case at all. Looking back at old catalogues, you'll see many names that hardly ever or never reappeared. So it's just a myth. Vice Cordiga, after all the months of work, nerves, effort, how will you relax once it's over? With art or without it? I relax both with and without art. That's not really an issue. I think I'll take some time out in Ticino. <laughs> that sounds nice. Let me wish you a successful Biennale and a relaxing time after it's over. Thank you very much, Biche Kodiga.